set up a little bit. Make sure focus is good. Make sure color is good. Focus seems a little off. Uh, we're going to need a bird's eye view on this one. All right. Sorry, just last minute. Holy smokes, there we go. Last minute little uh, tweaks here just to make sure everything's good to go. And then we will start shooting some paint. That looks pretty good. Yep, that's pretty good. All right. Whew. Stream looks good. We're good. We're ready to go. So. What we're working on today is this beast. Which is uh, Sanguinius, the Blood Angels Primark model from Forge World. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous sculpt. Hello, welcome. This model's insane. It's going to be really fun to do. So I don't have the... I was going to start on Sanguinius himself, but I don't have the magnets that I need for his arm. I thought 3mm magnets were going to do, but I need 2mm magnets. So I can magnetize his hands because one of his hands is just open because this is his gaming base and this is his display base. The demon goes on the display base like so and then Sanguinius goes in and he's actually holding the head of the demon down while dispatching him with the spear of Telesto, but uh, I want to be able, I want the client to be able to take it off the display base and game with it without looking weird, missing a hand. So we have to magnetize his hands. I didn't magnetize the spear because he comes with the sword, but if you do the, if you do the spear option, there is a sword in the scabbard. So I thought it'd be a little strange if he had two swords and zero spears the other way. So, but client signed off on it. So it's kosher. It did occur to me though, that while I'm painting all the rock and everything on his display base, I should probably paint all the rock on this base at the same time. So Everything matches, just the thought. So we're going to have to go back and prime that real quick. And then we're going to do a zenithal prime with white. And then we're going to get to it and start painting. So for black and white for that matter. I'm using Style and Renz from Badger. I uh, really like this primer. Uh, I've used I used Vallejo for a long time. Um, there's not really a huge discernible difference between the two that I've found so far. Um, Badger's just more consistent, I guess. Vallejo tended to get a little chunky towards the end of the 
towards the end of the bottle. And I haven't had that problem with Badger, so. So far, so good. Uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of airbrushing today. So. So I get my compressor a little further into the background. So we're just gonna do some black primer on the rock. And we're not gonna to worry too much about getting primer on Sanguinius himself because when we're done, when we're done painting the rock and everything, we're gonna mask it all off. And then we're gonna go back and prime and paint the Red Angel Primark of the Ninth Legion. So those, uh, those magnets should be here. Thursday, I think they said, Amazon said, so maybe in time for the Friday stream, I'll have, I'll have Sanguinius's base finished, and then I can magnetize, I can magnetize the hands and then start in on Put in on the armor and the cloak and all that good stuff. So I think I might actually paint. I usually I usually prime armor in black, even gold armor, just to get a a nice dark base to work from. I'm thinking about. Priming Sanguinius's armor in white, though, just to get it really, really shiny, 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 shiny yellow gold. So um, these bases are really cool. I'm looking. Let me get the uh, white primer on it, and then we can start to look at some of those elements on that base and kind of develop a plan of attack. So. I was hoping to have this done before I started the Twitch, but bedtime with the kids ran a little long, so here we are learning about Xenophil priming. And Xenophil just refers to, you can look it up, there's a gajillion tutorials and, and uh, explanations out there, but uh, Xenophil just is the zenith, the zenith of the light. Um, and it just, it just means like the direction that the light is coming from. And basically you prime black and then you prime white from above. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cast everything into relief and it's gonna give you a nice overall grayscale look at what you're painting. And if you work a lot with glazes, um, the Zenithal is going to be the base for your highlights and shadows and stuff. Um, I don't really paint that way. Most of what I would do would just be obliterated by like four coats of highlights. So I don't usually, I don't usually fuss with Zenithal priming too much, but for something like this, this where all the rock and everything is really well defined and it's, and when you look at it, when it's just prime black, it's just kind of a mess. So what we want is we want to get an idea of what exactly we're looking at here before before we go in and start to lay down some color. So we want to have a plan of attack and that's really, really important. Um, welcome to the Twitch stream. I, uh, I'm watching an OBS cause it's synced. So if you don't say hi in the chat, I'm not going to know you're there, but just, just FYI. 
feel free to ask questions, random questions. What the heck are you doing questions? Why are you doing that questions? How could you possibly think that was a good idea questions? They're all welcome. So now that we have that extraordinarily interesting part done, and it's a little, I mean, it's cool to see, uh, you see me working the mouse, it's because I'm moving the chat window here so I can see, so I can see when people say hi. So what, on the base itself, we have the demon, which is one of kind of a new era of demon from Forge World. Um, very spiky, creepy, unaligned type demon. And we start to get some colors on him. You'll you'll be able to see. Hey, what's up, Ryan? And uh, you'll be able to see a lot more of those elements once we start getting some paint on him. And then we have like a bunch of rocks. And one of the things that I love about painting rocks, this base is really cool. It's obviously a shattered, you know, it could very easily be Cygnus Prime. Um, could very easily be Cygnus Prime, which is probably what they intended. Um, but you can see kind of like Imperial elements. There's kind of like a halo with rays of light type deal over here. And then these are obviously man-made Imperial I mean, they don't have to be imperial, but they probably are. Obviously, handmade. These are cut stone. So those are going to have a little bit different element than, say, this, this strata down here, this underlayer down here, which is more just the dirt in the background. Um, let's get this. And I apologize. My camera does not autofocus very well at all so i'm going to be messing with it a little bit live there we go and we can go ahead and turn down perfect so we want to keep that in mind and then on sanguinius's base there's more of that stone there's more of that cut stone that's like a pillar and some cool little skulls, some nice little Easter eggs there. But then this is, so this strata here, we want to match kind of this underlayer, this strata under here. Um, and we want it all to tie together. The same stone on the pillar and those little rocks at the bottom there are going to look the same as the stone on the base. And everything will just be integrated nicely together. Now, Sanguinius... This model is going to be gold, red, and then kind of like an off, I don't know if I'm going to do like an off white, like snow leopard pelt for, for this. I think it, I think it is a snow leopard, leopard in the fluff. Um, Uh, he's asking if it's a commission piece or a personal project. This is a commission for uh, for my buddy Joe. So it's not mine, sadly. Um, it's always been one of those. It's always been one of those kind of uh, bucket list projects to paint each one of the Primarchs. Um, for myself, but I've painted Mortarian, Kurz, Alpharius. Mortarian was for me. Um, I since sold that army. And then uh, Conrad Kurz and Alpharius were both commissions. And Sanguinius is a commission. And as soon as the con is released, uh, I'll be painting one of those for my buddy Eric. So... Um, they're a popular piece to get commissioned, and I'm really excited to be doing them. I want to paint Alpharius again, though. That model was fun. That was a really cool model. 
I think this is, so this will be like a white, so red, gold, and white. So when we're thinking about the base, we want it to be cold. We want it to be a very cold base to offset how warm Sanguinius is going to be. He's going to have these huge white wings behind him, the gold, the red. I'll probably do the head of the spear red, maybe, maybe cold. I don't know. We'll get there. But at least initially, we want, we know that we want the rock and everything to be kind of colder tones um, to complement the warmth of both Sanguinius and then, whoa, let's try not to break the base before we paint it. And then this demon, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but it'll probably be warm. It'll probably be like black and orange or black and red or gray and red or some kind of weird... I don't know. I have to look. I haven't looked up much reference art for the demon. Um, something I usually do before I embark uh, on a project like this. So one of the things I love about painting stone is it can be literally any color. And you can do some really freaky, cool stuff to paint stone. And so that's what we're going to do today. You can just like, I love painting stone because you can just let it rip. I mean, you can really. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it a base coat in like kind of, kind of drawn out cream, concrete, brown, cream-ish colors, um, which I know I just said we wanted to go cold, but then we're going to take inks. Then we're going to take some inks and we're going to glaze inks over and do some dry brushing, a little more glazing, a little modeling maybe, I don't know. Um, we're just going to throw paint around until we get to a place that we're happy with. So that's the fun part about painting stone is you can really... You can really do whatever you want because, you know, on earth there are endless permutations of stone and then on, you know, in the galaxy, in an alien world, who knows? So this uh, first color is just going to be bottle air concrete. This is a nice neutral kind of blah base color and that's exactly what we want. So we're just going to go through and give it a nice base coat. And we don't have to be too surgical with this, but we do want to we want to put it on heavy enough that it covers. But we do want it to and you can see it as it dries, it's kind of this very blase taupe. Taupe is very soothing. So we just want to make sure that we get good coverage. We don't want to obliterate the shadows by just putting it on really thick, especially on the underneath. But, and then there are these little like helmets and skulls. There's a shoulder pad over here. We're going to do those by hand after because it's just too much of a pain to try and paint try and paint those and then mask them and do all that silliness. So we're just going to do those by hand and those can be rough. I might, I might end up throwing some weathering pigments on this. I'm not sure yet. So we'll just have to see where, we'll just have to see where it leads. So, but this is exciting. This is a great model to, great model to paint. Thanks Joe for the opportunity. Um, the build was really, really, really challenging for this model. Um, and I've built thousands of 
models. I've built hundreds of Forge World models, and this build was particularly challenging. Um, just from like all the little terruges on his shoulder, those are all little individual pieces. Um, all this little flare in here, like that laurel and the little strings coming out of the laurel, those were all individual pieces. Um, just a lot of finicky, finicky little bits. And you have to nail it because the movement is so dramatic that if something's off, it's going to look weird. And then you have to nail kind of the body placement and the base and everything because it slides into this display base. And if the forearm doesn't match up with the hand on the demon head, you're hoax, you know? So it was just a very exacting, very difficult build. Um, not like Fire Raptor or Mastodon difficult, but like, you know, fairly difficult. And despite what an unholy pain. The Mastodon was the build. Did they have bad mold lines? Not really. It um it wasn't really a mold line issue as much as it was um it wasn't really a mold line issue it was more of a and i'm having a my the air on my airbrush is stuck open issue excuse me one second so it wasn't really a mold line issue it was more of how small the parts were how many little just teensy teensy tiny little parts there were in this model usually you know usually when you're building a forge world model you're building a primark especially they all have those little those little pieces but the cast was very very good uh joe also bought it um right when it was like the week it was released the day it was released so they were the first castings coming out of that mold, and that's always good. Um, I'm not in this position, but if you are financially, and you know there's a Forge World model coming out that you want, order it as close to the release date, or pre-order it, you know, as soon as you possibly can. Because once they start pulling molds, they use the same mold. They don't redo molds very often at all so once they start pulling molds you know that's wear and tear on the mold but um so the casting was very good it's just the way the model was built let me grab the let me see if i have them right here yeah here we go oh, so Here's the, whoops, I'm not going to be able to read that. There we go. So like the build instructions are like all those little, the terruges, the sash, the wreath, the little shield. Uh, there's a little bit that's like just the hilt of a sword. Um, there's another bit that's just, you know, the halo behind his head, the little wreath. And so they all like, they're just all these little tiny. And then of course, I mean, these are way better than original Forge World instructions, but they're like not great, right? Like all those little terruges, um, like that's pretty helpful, but it doesn't really, you know, it's, it's two sides of one piece of paper for the instructions. And, uh, you know, and the head and the spear and, 
Moon Silver Blade, and then there's a blade in Carmine, so you know. And then the display base was a whole nother was a whole nother set of you know, why did they cast this stuff differently? There's all the spikes. And then my favorites, if you look at like six, seven, nine, and ten, are like separate rocks. Like rock one, rock two, rock three. And it's just like, are you serious? Like you really needed the demon was pretty easy. And then like on the back there is like rock two goes here. Rock three goes there. Like seriously? You couldn't just cast those into the base? Like those had to be separate? Or are you just trying to like I know there's I know I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a good reason. But like rock two could probably have just been left off. Really, could we just leave off rock two? The dangling rock. Thank you, break. So um Alpharius was pretty easy comparatively. Um, to build, Ryan's asking how, how hard, uh, Alpharius was to build pretty easy. The challenging, the most challenging thing about Alpharius was just getting the, getting the spear straight with his arms and getting the spear straight and getting everything kind of moving in that direction. But as far as like his helmet and his armor and the cape and backpack and all that stuff, it was pretty easy. Um, but I mean, way easier than, way easier than Sanguinius was. Um, that being said, Sanguinius was, he doesn't really know what's not what I want. Aged white, there we go. So yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have too much trouble with, uh, with Alpharius. It's, as long as you're okay with straightening out, straightening out blades and stuff like that, um, straightening out. I mean, I had to straighten the Spirit Telesto, of course, because something that long isn't going to hold up. That's going to be warped when it shows up. So I, did, I had to straighten that. But that's normal. Other than that, the casting was really, really good. Uh, same with Alpharius. I was really impressed with Alpharius' model. And that was a super fun model to paint. I really want to... Um, part of me really wants to do an Alpha Legion an Alpha Legion army with uh, Alpharius as a Chaos Lord and the Lernaean Terminator and using like the Headhunter upgrade from Forge World on Primaris Marines and stuff so maybe one day so this is Sand Model Air Sand again this is like a neutral tan sandy sandy tan tanny sand so we're just gonna and this we're going to do, we're not going to do an overall base coat. We're going to do more of like that zenithal with this. And we're just going to get this to a really neutral space. And then we are going to dry brush the bejesus out of this thing. So we can get, because before we, once we glaze it with all kinds of cool colors and stuff, we're not really going to have an opportunity to go back and do too much dry brushing. So we want to set that, we want to set those edges before we go through and do glazing. We're not going to be able, we're just not going to be able to match kind of the tone after we do the glazing well enough to, to where the, whoa, that's fine. Um, to where we're going to be able to match that the dry brush wouldn't stand out like too much because we want it to look natural. So we're kind of going to concentrate here on the rocks and try not to get too much. I hear much cooperate at some point tonight. That would be excellent. Um, so we're going to concentrate a little bit on the rocks and we're not going to get too much on that under layer. We want a little bit, but we really want, we want that to be dark. Like if you're looking at the base from the side, if you're looking at the base from the side, we want all that under layer under there 
to be the same tone, but we want it to be dark. We do not want that to attract attention um, when we're looking at the base from afar. Because uh, Sanguinius is going to be facing doo -doo -doo, uh, this direction, like... So, there we go. So Sanguinius is going to be facing like this. So you're going to be looking at this side of the base. So you want to, you really want to make sure this side of the base doesn't look funky. If, uh, if this is on your shelf, you know, you're probably, it's probably going to be angled like, angled like that or angled like, you know, something like that. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the front here. Um, these spikes coming out of the ground, we're going to do in like a really dark, steel metallic because we don't want we don't want that to distract at all from sanguineus and the demon and the confrontation and all that good stuff so we want that to be maybe we'll maybe we'll just do it we'll lighten it up just a little bit more so this is uh aged white god the brightness in this is killing me Sorry. On the fly adjustments. Yeah, we're in uh, week two of streaming. So we're still still getting the hang of it. My apologies. Bear with me for one second. We're going to do something. Whoa, not that. There we go. Much better. There we go. That's a more calm. Much, much better. How's that? There we go. That looks pretty good. That's pretty close color wise to what we're doing here. Give me a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your patience. Excellent. So, oh, that's much softer. I like that. So anyway, this is aged white. And this we're just going to hit. We're just going to hit the uh, stone with this. We're going to make sure that we don't get any of this on. That under that under layer there. So we're just going to hit really just not getting the center of the stone. We're just going to lighten it up. And we're going to try and keep this on the finished parts of the stone, not the, not the broken edges, but just the finished parts on the top, because those are going to be largely undamaged. So they're not going to be as discolored as, you know, you'll see like in pictures of rubble, even from ancient, ancient times, you'll see, you know, a destroyed wall, but on the on the side of the wall that survived, you know, there's still a mosaic. So just because you're just because something is um, you know sitting next to something that's been destroyed. So like on the back here, we just did that top part because the rest of the stone is all mangled. And then when we do the glazing, the glaze is going to sit down in in those destroyed portions and really accentuate them and then it's just going to make the kind of surviving stone stand out that much more which is what we want we want those little pieces of interest and in storytelling to look natural um, so that's what we're trying to achieve that's what we're trying to achieve by doing that so now we've got a pretty blase tan white base. Oh my gosh. I've been spelling stuff all day today. It's unbelievable. I was trying to film part of a, the last part of the Ultramoons tutorial for the Patreon before, before earlier today. And uh, 
ended up mucking up the transfer, which isn't ideal. And it could have been a teaching moment, but it was just destroyed. And then in the process of messing with the transfer that I had ruined, I spilled like three quarters of my uh, pot of Microsoft, which was really cool. So that just, that was really neat. So enough of my trials and tribulations. So now we have this, uh, you know, bleh base. And now comes the fun part. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a big old dry brush. GW official dry brush, just because I don't know where my craft brushes are. My kids probably took them, but, uh, so we're going to use the GW official. And Ryan, are you doing that army in 30K or 40K? And you said you're using Alpharius, but you can uh, find uses for them in 40K. So we're taking Vallejo Model Color Ivory, which is, you know, what I call damn near white. It's, it's pretty close to white, but it's not white. And then we're going to dry brush. We're going to do a pretty, a pretty heavy dry brush on all this stuff on everything. And that's really going to bring out, you can see that's really bringing out the texture in the stone. And even on the top part, there's little imperfections. They do a really, really, really good job over there at Forge World um, sculpting, especially like their, their scenic bases and stuff are just really well done, really natural looking. So we're going to go through and we're going to do a quick heavy dry brush. I'm not fussed about getting it on the, the spikes because we're going to go back and the metallics that we lay down on those aren't going to be affected by that at all. So we are not being delicate with the dry brush we want to get we want to make sure that we get all that texture <laughs> yeah 40k i mean it's definitely it's hard to concentrate on more than one system for sure that's a pretty good it is tough I know my buddy Mark and I want to do a little bit of Age of Sigmar. And I've got some Night Haunt models lying around. Just just for a beer and pretzels roll dice. I mean, I don't drink, but beer and pretzels like roll dice, not worry about anything game. And it's, I mean, obviously I've launched the Patreon and Oh yeah, those Bone Reaper guys are nuts, dude. That's the thing, like, and I've had this conversation with um, with Mark a lot. What helps me more, a Twitch subscription or a Patreon subscription? Uh, probably Patreon, I'd imagine. Um, just because I'm trying to build that up, I'm, I'm still figuring out Twitch. And with a Patreon subscription, you get a ton of videos. <laughs> Whereas you can just come hang out on Twitch whenever. Uh, but I think, thank you for asking. Um, but I'd say probably Patreon, there's more upside for you. And, um, and for me, it, it's, it's where I'm really focusing right now. I'll figure this Twitch, Twitch thing out, but for now I'm using it just to, just to kind of interact and, and figure out streaming and cause I enjoy doing it. I think this is fun. Um, I wish I wish I had time for Necromunda, man. Necromunda was one of my games back in the day. Necromunda and Epic were really my my two big games that I played, and um, I that 
whole system and models and um, just incredible, just incredible. But they're just there are guys here that play, but I just haven't, I just haven't taken the time to to develop it. Um, it's one of those you're like, oh, I just paint ten models, you know, but like the whole campaign system and and all that. It's just it's it's a definitely a time investment. But if you have like a group of guys to to go through that with, and you can keep it going and develop those gangs and stuff, it's so cool. I'm jealous. Um, but yeah, Age of Sigmar to me just seems like a really chill, really chill game. The models are insane. Um, I have Night Haunts because I just love painting those guys. Um, they airbrush really well. Nice texture. Um, they're just really, really cool. So it'll be interesting to see. The good question, the $10 tier for the Patreon is for the month. And that is every video that's released. And then... Um, yeah, buddy. What's up, Brian? We welcome Brian from the Splinter Mind podcast, my dear friend. Um, so Ryan, yeah, the $10 tier is for the whole month. And then you also, I'll invite you to, I'll, I invite all $10 patrons, but, uh, part of the kick on the $10 tier is I have a secret Facebook group, which, um, for a painting of $10 and above patrons. And it's kind of a place where you kind of post work in progress or, Hey, how do you do this or whatever? And, uh, I'll give feedback. Other patrons give feedback. There's some really good painters in there. My friend Ben, um, is a painter is a patron and, uh, he's a good painter. He's in there giving. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that. He's in there giving advice. So, I want to create like a really cool little painting community where, um, where, you know, you can post stuff that you're working on or stuff that you don't think looks good and say like, Hey, why doesn't this look good? Um, uh, without worrying about, you know, your rep or <laughs> somebody saying, Oh, look at this guy. This doesn't look good. Um, So it's cool. It's, it's, uh, and then I'll post like polls. Oh, and I do a Facebook live chat with the, with the fa with the Facebook group every f Sunday night. I'm going to be doing that. And that was a lot of fun. And in that I kind of go over, I'll answer questions. Um, I'll do, I'll announce like what I'm up to the next week or different projects that I have planned or, um, stuff like that. So that, so that, that was really fun. We did that on Sunday and then I actually kind of messed up my Twitch stream because it ran long, but that's okay. So thank you for the subscription. I appreciate that, buddy. Um, let me know when you get around to Alfarious because that stuff was fun. Uh, so what we're going to do now, now comes the fun part. This is the part I've been waiting for. Everything up to this point was just a tease. So, this is where we're going to have a good time. And this is where we're going to develop kind of the, the colder tones in the rock. Um, and we're really going to see the character of this start to get developed. And then we can go back, we can do some more dry brushing, we can do some more glazes. But we're going to do, we're going to do the first pass and we're going to see what it looks like and just kind of throw, throw paint around which I think is Brian's, you know, motto. So we're going to be using the uh, Vallejo Game Inks. Uh, these are really good. They're not quite like I want to paint models with them. Like scale, like uh, scale 75 inks. They're not as clean, I would say. Um, but they're heavily pigmented. You can thin them down. They're really good. So uh, violet, black, green, and then this is, I think this used to be sepia. I'm pretty sure this used to be sepia. So we have kind of a warmer tone, 
but then we have these two cold tones with the violet and the black green and we're gonna kind of glaze and get a little get a little spooky um and really we can grab we're gonna start with let's start with the black green we're gonna start with black green we're gonna shoot it and then we're gonna go and we're gonna be switching between these pretty quick and and just kind of spraying all over the place so and this is tough because like this is part of what's fun about doing this is going to sound terrible but part of what's fun about doing just a one-off commission like this um where it's just a centerpiece like it's just sanguineous i don't have to worry about replicating this for a, for a paint scheme for an entire army um, Joe, I apologize, but, um, I, I don't, you know, I gotta do one of these things. So if I were doing a paint scheme for an entire army, I don't necessarily know that I would necessarily go this direction, but, um, because I only have to do one of them, let's see what happens. So this is the, this is the black green. And you can sort of see, geez, you can't see anything. What happened? Welcome to Colin messes with his camera settings live on Twitch. I mean, it's not a whole lot greener than that, but it's greener than that. Come on. That's a little better. Okay. Uh, there we go. Probably shouldn't just store your airbrush in your mouth if this is your first time watching somebody airbrush. Um, don't do that. My wife has really good dental insurance, so I sometimes feel like I can get away with it. But so this you can see it's just barely tinting, just barely tinting that rock. But then if we accidentally hose it down, it's getting a little more green. So we're just we're just adding some green tones in here. The other benefit to Vallejo inks is they smell kind of nice. Excuse me. They do, but take me back to like my magic marker sniffing days. Kidding, don't don't stiff don't stiff markers. Why do I think kids are gonna be watching this? I don't know. They had me check a box that was like all ages content, so I'm not swearing a lot like I normally do. So this is just kind of getting those first those first tones in and you can see like I oversprayed on that back rock there uh, one and I'm not gonna worry about it because it's a rock. so <laughs> do they even make those any I doubt they even make those anymore. I mean they probably do they're probably just at the dollar store for poor kids. But um, am I allowed to say that? It's like allusions to class warfare. Is that is that all ages content or is that adult content? I guess if you're not cursing, it's all right, right? Ugh. Sorry, Brian, Brian shows up and I get all proletarian. So let's try... Let's see what happens if we can get, so this is going to be Vallejo model color white, and this is just pure white. And let's see if we can do something interesting on these rocks with like some really watered down, some really watered down white. This is almost like white. And not really, not marble, 
because, you know, forget that. But just some variation in the rock, I don't know. This could be good, could be cool. Could look horrendous. But the nice thing about doing basing is uh, you can always prime right over it and try again. And we'd be out all of, you know, how long we've been on here. Yeah, almost an hour. What is one hour in, for the sake of our art? Well, it's an hour of life. I'm not going to get back, but let's see if we can do, I don't know. That might look cool. What's happening? How you doing? Basing. That's awesome. <laughs> I wouldn't say basing is my favorite part. I'd say finishing bases is my favorite part because that means the model's done. Um, doing basing isn't necessarily my favorite part, but I really like I like coming up with a scheme. I like basing, um, especially like when you start to get into uh, pigments and stuff like that. Then it gets pretty fun. Um, I've been I used to do resin bases from Dragonforge Designs, and they're really high quality. Uh, Jeff's a great guy, he's a good company. But the uh, ex expendable income, nice. The expendable income met, it was either models or bases. So it went, not that I have expendable income, but with two kids, but uh, it was either models or bases and I like making my own bases, so I went back. I went back to making my own bases, and um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to put your personal stamp on it. Um, and I like painting them, but I like painting that black that black base room. I know that much. Uh, I have not, I have not magnetized the base yet. I will though. I did for, uh, I've done it for like Alpharius and other luminaries, uh, Typhus, Mortarian. So I will do it. I didn't have small enough magnets. Um, it's Micah, Micah, right? Micah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Micah, I, I was talking to you earlier today about, or last night about Sanguinius, about the build, because I knew he had done one. And uh, he was saying to magnet, he magnetized the wrists and everything. I didn't have any, I didn't have small enough magnets. And then I went and bought like three millimeter magnets and they were still too big. So now then I had to go home and I could have saved myself a trip. I could have, then I had to go home and order two millimeter magnets off Amazon. So now I'm going through and just where the, where this white part like dried heaviest, I'm just reinforcing it with some more white. See what that looks like. But so it's gonna be, I don't know, some kind of pattern. We'll find out. It'll be interesting. I don't know if it'll be good, but it'll be something. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, Micah, okay. Yeah, so we're getting a little, yeah, we're getting a little, A little variation there, a little visual interest is the name of the game here. There we go. And really, this is already—I'm already regretting doing this because this is just taking, just taking more time. 
Then we gotta wait for this to dry before we can go back and start do more glazing. So, but thankfully, the glazing part shouldn't take too long. So, kind of reinforce that. That looks kind of cool. That could be cool after we glaze it a couple times, right? And just keep telling myself that. After the uh, micro set incident, I'm starting to question whether I know what I'm doing. So, and that stuff just smells terrible. Terrible. Well, Brian, I have a Patreon now. I have to use sport terms like visual interest. I can't just say, like, yeah, that looks cool. Let's go. Right? Isn't that the... I mean, it could be worse. I could have a podcast. Every Everybody has a podcast these days, but... <laughs> um... Yeah, that's cool. I like it. But yeah, that micro set just smells terrible. The stuff smells awful. And I spilled probably three quarters of the bottle and had to like clean the desk, empty the trash. It was just like, fuck. That was no bueno. That tutorial definitely did not get filmed tonight. <laughs> But I've already released two videos this week, so I'm like, you know, maybe it's okay that I don't release a third on Tuesday. So, yeah, I posted that Iron Hands guy. I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do a Iron Hands tutorial, too, with that metallic sheen Iron Hands. Those are cool. They're the new hotness, so... I'm gonna keep up with the keep up with the crowd. So this is gonna be fun. This is now we're going in with the violet Vallejo Gaming violet, and start to glaze that in. Ooh, that is very violet. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's violet. That is really turning purple. Huh. It's too late now. I'm hoping this sepia is going to come in and save me. It probably will. It probably will, because this violet is violet. But that's okay, because... Well, this is looking weird. This is looking really weird. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little afraid. Yeah. Just keep... I think the original idea is sound. So we're going to keep... Whether it was actually sound is an entirely different reality, but I think the original idea was sound. So we're going to keep, we're just going to push through, keep pushing. So now we're at the funky, pale Easter part. Yeah, it's really important, Micah, about the putting out a lot of content. It's really important to me for people to feel like they're getting their money's worth for the Patreon. And for me, that means putting out content. Um, but I, and, and I'll find a balance between making tutorial videos and then making, um, you know, doing streams. I already dialed back the streams because I, what the seven I did last week was just nuts. So, I backed off the of streaming, but then I still need to like paint models. I still need to paint models for money. I still need to paint models for uh, myself at some point again, hopefully. So, but it's really, really important to me that that people subscribe and then 
go, wow, this is this is a really good value. This is six bucks for just the the intro, the the lowest tier, six bucks a month, and look at all this content. So that's what I want to keep. That's what I want to keep doing. Um, and I'd like to where the so I have like four paint racks that have literally nearly 400 paints in them and then I have this tub full of paint and then I still can't find the paint I'm looking for Ah, that's because it was in my paint rack and not in my magic box. Um, yeah, so it, so it's really important that people get value. They're giving me their hard-earned money for for this venture. They're supporting me in this venture. So, um, and I, I just have I have so many videos I want to do. I'm like, you know, I want to do a weathering. I want to do chipping. I want to do this and that and this and that and this and that. And it's like, okay, well, do it next week or do it next month or. <laughs> there's time so yeah Ryan uh, it's a good time to do an Iron Hands video because of the supplement and um, I really want trying to figure out like I don't just want to paint space marines but they just got a new codex and they're getting supplements and um, they're the most popular army in 40k and 30k, obviously. So you can't you can't really go wrong painting Space Marines. I really like painting Space Marines. I, you know that too. But if I, I think like I think that applies, especially like as I get going, I think that. Applies is appealing to more people than if I just hauled off and painted like a Tyranid warrior from High, High Fleet Jormungundr and did like a two-week tutorial on High Fleet Jormungundr. Um, you know, that doesn't attract the same number of eyeballs as, oh, wow, we just got this Codex supplement for Iron Hands. Look at this really cool new model. And blah, 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 blah. And, oh, how to paint Iron Hands. Look at that. You know, so... I'm going to try and keep it topical, but I also don't want to just follow, I also don't just want to follow the flavor of the month. I want to, I want to be doing my own thing too, so I may have thinned down that shade a little too much. So now we're going in, this is a game color wash sepia shade i went away from the sepia ink um this is a little more transparent and this is a little this is going to settle into the into the crevices more and i really need to knock down this whole violet experience that we've gone going that we've got going on here um so i need to be a little bit more a little bit more forceful with the sepia. I did like the green though. I like where that was going. Uh, that violet just like maxed it out. Oh, no way. Sweet. Whoa. But like, I think it'd be cool. Like, I think it'd be cool to do like Howling Banshees. I mean, like, you know, plastic aspect warriors for the first time ever. Um, I think that would be, that would be sweet. Um, uh, do some Eldar in general. I really like painting Eldar. I think it, it really fits my style really well. 
Oh, the OC, the OCR Bone Reapers. Yeah, maybe. Um, I might turn I might turn in a Nighthawk tutorial at some point. Um, those Bone Reapers are pretty cool. I think those Bone Reapers would look really good. Um, kind of like not not bones. Um, I think part of my part of my issue with the paint scheme is that they just look like super fancy samurai skeletons and the armor doesn't really rate as armor necessarily. Um, one of the things I'd want to do, one of the things I want to do was, would be to do like a black or really, really dark blue armor. And then, come on. And then do like the jade green, kind of like Necron almost armor or, or that classic dark Eldar kind of scheme for the Bone Reaper armor I think would be cool. Um, just something other than bone, 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 bone. And now I'm thinking about Bone Thugs and Harmony, which... If you're mine and Brian's age, we'll take you right back to 1994. Um, Eldar would be cool. I mean, Eldar, um, I love painting Eldar. I had a little, I had a little Eldar army for a little bit that I ended up selling. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot to, to cover doing Eldar too. You can do craft worlds, you can do Aspect shrines, you can do just basic Eldar gems and how to paint a wave serpent. And I'll leave the you know, I'll leave the dark Eldar to guys like Brian and Scary and really I want to know how Alex from Splinter Mind paints his Eldar because that's that's just ridiculous. Oh, there goes my kid friendly rating. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know who Alex is, a uh, Cavalier on Instagram, and he's Brian's co-host on Splinter Mind, and he does like Corsair themed Eldar that are he's a very much like heavy metal style painter, and they are sick. They're really, really sick. He does like really interesting conversions and he did some shining spears that are like white with gold riders with like a lot of Ivaneth bits and stuff. And the white is just so butter smooth. I, I kind of hate him. Um, but really, if you haven't, if you haven't checked out Alex's stuff, um, Go check it out because he is he is really really good, um, and I want I want to know his secrets. That white is nuts. Okay, so that oh my gosh. That. I think it's Cavalier. C A V A L I E R. Cavalier. I think it's his Instagram. So that uh, sepia shade really, really knocked down all that violet. But you can kind of see, kind of underneath it all, like at the top there, you can kind of see there's a little bit of that violet left over, which is nice, which I like. Um, you can see it a little more here. There's still that violet in there. That's nice. Digging that. Um, this needs a little bit more of the, the shade. My airbrush is like stuck on and I'm super wide. That's all.
that the air is, is messing up on me right now, but we shall endure. I think it might be new airbrush time. Maybe. Uh, I've had my, my Badger 105 broke, and then now this is my 105 Extreme. And it's clearly not functioning properly. So that's disappointing. Been looking at, uh, thanks, Brian. Eldar Cavalier. And I'm, uh, I'm pumping up Alex because, uh, they're interviewing me on, on the first winter mine this weekend. So I gotta make sure, I gotta make sure they're, I'm in their good graces, but no, they're good friends. Brian was up here painting for Boise Cup. Um, am I going to do true metal metal or non-metallic metal on Sanguinius' armor? True metal metal all day, every day. Ain't nobody got time for non-metallic metal. Um, non-metallic metal is filed under one of those things that Maybe I'll learn how to do one day. Um, it's mostly a matter of time. Um, time to develop the skill, the time it actually takes to paint it. And I'm a very time conscious painter. I also... <laughs> There's a very fine line between non-metallic metal looking really, really good and then non-metallic metal looking like regular paint and not looking metallic. Um, and, and then there's just a, a whole band of non-metallic metal like when I would start and experiment that just looked terrible. So I'm willing to go through all that ugly phase and learning a new skill and all that stuff, I'm willing to do it, but I'm not willing to do it when I have a ton of other work to do. Um, and I really like, I like working with true metallics and figuring it out. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's challenging and, um, you know, there are things that I still need to improve on with true metallics for sure. Um, sword blades, for whatever reason, trip me up a lot. I'm starting to get starting to get a little better by mixing in non-metallic paints, um, mixing grays and blues into like silver base coats and stuff like that. But um, if uh, if you go to if you subscribe to Angel Geraldez on YouTube, he has some really great tutorials. Um, for true metallic metals that were really good. They posted somewhat recently. Um, what am I doing right now? What am I doing with my life? Uh, I am painting stones on single space days. So this is actually looking, this is actually looking pretty good. Um, I like, and I had literally no idea what this is, <laughs> this is gonna look like. But I think that's a nice, oops, it's a little, a little light right there, but that's fine. Um, did I get Angel's second book? Not yet. Uh, the first one was really, really, really good. I really want to get the second one. Uh, but I forgot about it until now, so I'm going to have to put that on the list. But um, I like this kind of burnt kind of sandstone -y thing that we've got going on here. I think that's pretty cool. Um, we're not there yet. This is... Hmm. 
what to do, what to do. The book isn't cheap. The first book wasn't cheap. Yeah, the first book came with like a limited edition model. It's like 50 bucks. Um, some of the best recipes I have came out of that book though. I mean, some of the best, I learned a lot from that first one. Um, even just simple stuff like adding ivory to colors instead of white to get lighter tones. Um, that I learned from Angel Geraldez. So I definitely learned, I learned a lot from that first book. I still do. I still look through it, even though, even though that like infinity, super high contrast isn't really my style. I mean, it is a little bit, but it's not really, um, I learned a lot from his first book. So where do we go from here? This is about the time that I would text Brian. So I'm glad that he's here and be like, what do I do now? Um, maybe another dry brush. Yeah, maybe we'll do another dry brush and then we'll throw a couple more. Oops. We'll throw a couple more glazes on there. Maybe one more glaze and then a dry brush. I don't know. Let's do one more glaze and then a dry brush. So this is part of the kind of ebb and flow and back and forth and trying to get to something resembling a decent. Um, yeah, I think that was on maybe the Battle Hosts where I was talking about uh, Angel Geraldus' book. Um, that one's really good. So this is Beal Tan Green. I didn't want to go with the black green. This is a uh, Beal Tan. We'll see what this does. At a certain point, I might just hose this thing with Agrax Earthshade and call it a day. So that darkened it up a little bit and kind of gave it a little bit more. I like that. That looks good. So we're going to shoot this maybe a little bit more from like underneath and kind of give it kind of a spooky, not really spooky, but like. A little more, more green. Ooh, I like that. That's looking good. That's looking pretty cool. Let's do that. Let's double down on that. So that you can kind of see at the bottom there, it's kind of got that greenish little tinge, tinge to it. That's going to really look good. That's going to really look good when we get into the really warm tones and sanguineous. It's really going to offset that really well. Um, Micah, this is a commission for my buddy Joe. So I don't get to keep this one. I didn't get to keep the last one. Um, so we're going to hit those crevices with that green. I like that. That's kind of otherworldly and weird. Um, but that looks cool. I'm digging it. And then I'll I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit this whole base with an oil wash for sure. Um, and really, so that'll flatten out that'll flatten out some of this color difference too. Um, whoa! Try not to do that. But that's looking pretty spooky. And that's what we want. We want spooky. We want kind of weird. I mean, I don't think this base is set on Terra. But even if it is, the intrusion, obviously there's been a heck of a chaos incident, whatever it is. Um, oh, that was way too green. Yikes. Well, 
but I do like overall kind of a little glaze with that green. That's that's pretty cool. That's kind of a weird stone look. Yeah, the base is, yeah, I said that at the beginning. I think this base is Cygnus Prime. And they're these weird, because, like, these demons aren't, you know, 40K demons. These are the new line of, this is really the first, like, Ruin Storm demon. And I think in Fear to Tread, I think it was the first pitched battle from... Astartes fighting like an actual demonic legion, like demon demons, not just like, oh no, our Gell Gellerfield went down. What is that? But like, here's here's an army of demons. Go fight it. Um, yeah, Fear to Trap was pretty good. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. Um, so where do we go from here? We need to do another little dry brush, but uh, yeah, and that's where Sanguinius battled Cabanda, the Bloodthirster. And his son's, was it Cabanda that just dropped down and annihilated like a thousand blood angels just like when he landed, just killed them. And they thought Sanguinius died and they like went nuts with the Black Rage and just like killed everything. And that was really the first like widespread kind of succumb to the Black Rage. And then he goes to Terra and, spoiler, spoiler, and dies. And then, you know, it affects his Legion for like 10,000 years. Um, so that is looking pretty good. I like that. So from there, let's do... So we have, a, we have a little bit of an issue. We have some light spots, like you can see down in there. Um, that's not good. We don't want that. Unless, hang on. Nope. Darn. I was hoping the demon was going to cover it. The demon is definitely not going to cover it. So... We don't want that light spot to be a distraction, and we can't really rely on an oil wash to fully kind of tint that as much as we need it to be tinted. So, so we're just going to do a quick, come on, quick test fit, quick color fit for the rock and everything before we start fussing with it a little more. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like that. I even like the green in there. The green kind of gives it this weird demonic glow. Maybe I'll work some green in on the demon. I know everybody paints this demon like black with like magma. Bleh. Um... Maybe I can work in some green on him. That would be cool. That would really offset the the gold and the red from Sanguinius. That'd be dope. So the ground is in a good place. It's in a happy place. So we're going to stop airbrushing that. And then try and find something to airbrush or something to, to dry brush it with that's going to make it stand out. And then we'll wash it with an oil wash and just once we've done, once we've done the little elements and the helmet and the, 
the big metal spikes and stuff. Then we'll do the oil wash at the very end. We'll seal it, and then we'll mask off uh, like Sanguinius's base, and then start painting Sanguinius. So there's really probably only a couple hours left on this base, if that. Um, but I could just bang out, I could just bang out the um, shoulder pad and the helmet and skulls and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna do another quick dry brush real quick, just to. I could even cheat and just do the helmets black. Well, it's a chaplain helmet. Um, do another quick dry brush just to just to catch the edges. Um, but what color are we gonna use? Needs to be orangey, but neutral, but not. Because it like orange brown is too much. Ooh. Oh. I really need to move my paint. You can see my my paint uh, my paint racks are like all I built myself this enormous painting desk for this venture. Um, for doing videos and stuff like that. So I built myself it's uh, like 33 inches wide and I think a little over seven feet, 33, like 33 inches deep and then over seven feet wide. Um, so the laptop, everything fits on the desk, but my paint racks are like out of arm's reach. So I have to get up. That's not ideal. Um, maybe this Oroco from scale 75, this might work. Might be too yellow. Is that too yellow? Shit. This, see, this is what I tried to avoid by doing the heavy dry brush the first time with the ivory, but then... We ended up doing so many glazes that it really kind of obliterated those highlights, but that's okay. We can recover. Um... Maybe sandalwood. Yeah, sandalwood might work. Sandalwood? Sandalwood. Let's try sandalwood. Or we can mix the two and see what really happens. Really get crazy. So. Um, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to go with that Oroco, my first instinct. It is a little yellow, but then all that sepia, I think, I think could work. We're going to find out here in a second. What part do I not mind redoing? That is the question. Or at least like messing with. How about this little add-on piece on the back? We'll start with that. And we'll start with like the bottom of that. That way. How does that look? Yeah. Trust your instincts. That looks pretty good. Not oppressive, not it's not adding it's what I really didn't want is I really didn't want it to add color. I just wanted it to kind of define the edges, but I didn't want it to add a lot of color to what was going on here. So I think we succeeded in that where we've kind of developed we can we can highlight those. edges and really make sure that they stand out and that they're just a little light dry brush to pick out some of that some of that texture on top of the rock but very very lightly 
because we do not want, we don't want this to just look like I just went back and dry brushed yellow over it. But that looks pretty good. Ha! Huh. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. We may want to lighten that up and do a very, very light dry brush on like the outer edge um, the second time around. But for an initial for an initial dry brush, that's pretty good. Because then the oil wash is going to tie all, tone all that down and tie it all together as well. So I rely on the oil wash to do a decent amount of work for me, but that's why I, it's a great technique, especially especially on what is essentially you know terrain basing. Um, to be able to just go and oil wash it and get all those crevices and all that shade and everything done. That looks pretty good. I'm, I'm super happy right now um, that we're getting that much definition. It is a little yellow, so we'll go through, we'll go back and maybe lighten that up a little bit, but then the, the oil wash is going to tint that a little bit too, so... Maybe we won't worry about it too much. The important thing is that we're getting definition on these rocks so we can start to see all that texture that they put into this base. This really is a beautiful base. I like this one. I really want to do... Um, Russ and Magnus's base, and and Russ and Magnus. Um, I think that would be. I think that'd be a lot of fun. The pros the Prosperine ruins and those two models are just so dynamic. But I've played I've played exactly one game of Horus Heresy against Magnus and the Thousand Sons, and it was just like abusive. Like I have seventy seven psychic dice. I'm like oh yeah, that's a thing. What can I do? Well, you don't have any psychers, so you can't do anything. I'm like this is fun. I remember why I loved 7th edition. Um, but that has more to do with that army than the game necessarily. I've always said, like, if all my friends played Horus Heresy, I'd play Horus Heresy. But just isn't. And this is that sandalwood that we're going back with. Also from scale 75. God, I'm not really loving that either. I think we mix the two. I'm going to add some white. There we go. That's interesting. So we're going to mix... Oh yeah, Loken and Abaddon, that one's good. Um, I don't know, I feel like Ferris and Fulgrim gets overshadowed, but I really like Ferris's model, I think it's brilliant. Fulgrim's uh, not one of my favorites. I remember hearing somewhere or reading somewhere and this this may have been before Alan Bly passed, so there's kind of a Horace Heresy with Alan and Horace Heresy after Alan, unfortunately. Um, I mean, Anuj is doing a great job, but there's just a 
a noticeable difference. Uh, but anyway, I heard that that looks good. That's the sandalwood mixed with the Oroco and then lightened with white. And that actually, that I'm actually happy with. So, and again, the oil watch is going to knock that down. So, not too fussed about. We do want it to be a little drastic. So that is pretty good. Um, anyway, I heard that they were going to do the confrontation on the bridge uh, with uh, Demon Abaddon, or excuse me, uh, you know, Horus after he turned and the Emperor, and that their scenic base was going to be the bridge of the Vengeful Spirit with the fallen Sanguinius on the base. And I heard that, I heard that, that was the plan for that model, um, but we'll see. I don't envy I don't envy whoever's got to sculpt the emperor. Let me tell you, I do not envy that guy. Cause, and they better print like 7,000 of those things day one. Cause that'll be, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was their, as long as it's a good sculpt, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Forge World's best selling model ever, would be the Emperor. Because um, if it's a good sculpt, you know, even just, even people that just paint or people that paint for competition, um, that could be, that has the potential to be a, a iconic kind of piece where you know, everybody paints one. Because it's the Emperor, man. I mean, what are you going to, you know, you do not paint the Emperor? Come on. And somebody's going to take him and make him like, this is my Alpha Legion, this is Alpharius, this is my Alpha Legion Chaos Lord. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. So now that we have the rocks sorted, that was fun. It was a little stressful when that violet kind of went haywire, but it ended up being fun. That's what counts. Um, so now let's just do a quick, let's just bang out that dark metallic on those spikes and then see how much time we have left um yeah i don't like i think if you're going to make a model of fulgrim he needs to be smirking basically or just like placidly calm um the fact that he's like oh, is unfortunate um, I don't like the leap. I don't like the leaping pose. I don't really think it's great. Um, I, I think they definitely could have done, could have done more with that model. Um, but that being said, it's certainly not terrible. Um, I have way more problems with like Mortarian and Gilliman than I do with Fulgrim. So I uh, dipped into my stash of Vallejo Metal Color because this stuff is just incredible. If you don't have any of this, go get it. It will change your life. 
Uh, it's expensive, but worth it. Uh, first, these are huge pots. These are like 10 bucks. These will last forever. Um, but this stuff is great. Airbrush, brush, just pour it and go. Um, this stuff is fantastic. And we're going to start with dark, what is this? Burnt iron. And burnt iron is great because burnt iron is really, really dark. Um, which is what we want because Sanguinius is going to be so light. We want like a really dark, kind of messed up, metallic, rusty kind of deal. Um, and this stuff, this is right out of the pot with the brush. And this is thin enough to airbrush. The, cover of the, the coverage with this is just bonkers. I love this stuff. I can't get enough of it. And they have like, it, it's for military modeling. So they have all kinds of crazy variations. They have like, you know, six different kinds of aluminum. Uh, my favorite's the pale burnt metal or the uh, exhaust manifold and pale burnt metal are my two favorite. Um, they have these like really crazy like green and brown tones in them. Those are my go-to's. But this I wanted to start off really dark and then we'll do a quick dry brush and then we'll do some like rust washes. And then we'll do another dry brush or like a shade and some rushed washes and dry brush. I don't know. But um, put some green into it. Maybe incorporate some of that green. That would be cool. But one of the, like I said, one of the things that's cool about doing kind of these one off pieces is the ability to experiment, the ability to. try out new things and new and then what I learn what I learned doing this I can then take to an army project and say oh I really like that really dark rusty metallic that I did for Sanguinius's base I'm going to do that on you know Death Guard trim or whatever um you know gene stealer cult bikes or you know whatever it ends up being um this basing i would never do on an army wide scale i think that would be a little crazy but but it's fun to play around with so it's one of the things one of the things i really like about doing commissions is is that is that opportunity to step out and do something that you know I might not do if I were just left up to my own devices not that I wouldn't paint sanguinius or something but we caught up yeah we caught up in the chat what about you guys what are you guys working on tonight I almost pushed back Sanguinius just because I didn't have the magnets for his hand. I was like, oh, I can't start on Sanguinius. I, I don't have the magnets. I got to wait a couple days. Um, and I was going to do some. Chipping weathering on. I have a Redemptor Dreadnought that's been hanging around for months and months and months. It's a easy to build redemptor that I've had just in my 
kind of random assembled models shelf uh, for months. And want to paint it up for Emperor Spears for myself. And I was almost going to do that. And then I remembered that Sanguinius had this gigantic scenic base and said, oh, I can paint a base tonight. That would be interesting. That would be fun. That would be productive. Responsible. You know. All that fun stuff. So, I'm going to try and knock this base out probably tomorrow. The base and probably the demon. Although, yeah, I'm streaming tomorrow too, so. Maybe I'll finish this on stream tomorrow afternoon. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, those turbo dorks, those are like the, um, those are kind of like the green stuff world color shifts, right? Um, That's cool. I did. I used the green. I used the color shift paint on Alpharius, and it was neat, man. It was hard to highlight. I'll give you that. I mean, I, I had to like come up with. I'd like tint metallics with inks to kind of get any kind of highlight going. But it was fun to play with. I can definitely see how it would work on Necrons. Hosting a large 30k weekend this coming weekend. Finish up a few projects for it. Box Dramatic Contemptor, Mortifactor, Falcon Inferno, Rogue Trader, and Land Raider. Oh! That's a lot of work, Ryan. That is a lot of work. Kudos. Um, I saw a Rogue Trader, Land Raider on, I think, Barter Bucket uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday. Um, and I was tempted, man. It was a good price. And I was like, oh, that would be really cool. That would be really, really cool. But um, for my Emperor Spears, I'm going just Primaris. I'm not going to have any. My goal is to not have any regular Marines in the army. Um outside of just maybe vehicles, but even that I'd love to stay mono, I'd love to stay just Primaris. So, um, you know, what am I going to do with a first edition Land Raider? Like, I'm just going to paint it up and it's going to be in the case. Like, that would be cool, but um, I don't have that kind of free time. So, just past on it. What time is it? Why am I already yawning? Ten fifty. Okay, so we're coming up on sort of the end of this, but that sounds really cool, man. I mean, it that's great to do hosting events like that. Hey, how's it going? Tie dye monkey. I used to wear a lot of tie dye when I was a kid. That was raised by hippies in Northern California, so tie dye was definitely a thing. That light mirror is being sold. Is that the one that? No. Is that the one that you're selling for like 25 bucks? Because if that was the one you're selling for like 25 bucks, I think I deleted that chat though. I don't think it's the same one. But it could be. Yeah, I can't find it. Let's keep painting. But, uh, 
That's such a cool model. I mean, it's just such an iconic, like, it's just such a neat model. I just think it's neat. Um, I'd love to paint one. But then my favorite, I mean, my favorite Land Raider is... Well, damn your friend, you told me it was sold. But, um... My favorite Land Raider is the, uh... Armored Proteus, the 30k Land Raider. Um, I guess I mean you can use it in 40k, but I love that. I love that model. I want multiples of that just to use as regular Land Raiders. Land Raiders ever are useful again, but if I'm doing only Primaris, then I'm doing Repulsors, and that's cool. So. Blood for the blood god, indeed. Speaking of blood for the blood god, I really want to get my, uh, <laughs> I really want to get my berserkers built so that I can paint those up. And I want to get the drills that I have for my berserkers built. So, there's a lot to do. I'm not going to run out of stuff to do on stream. I can tell you that much right now. There is plenty to do. So, yeah, I just love, Ryan, I just love those tracks, like, going back up over the hall and, you know, that Spartan, Spartan look. Actually, that's not true. I lied. My favorite... I, you know, I gotta be honest, Ryan, I'm not sure. That's how that's how good I am at Twitch. I don't even know. I think there's a thing at the top where you can subscribe. Uh, but yeah, if you have an Amazon membership, you can subscribe, but then you have to remember to renew it, um, which was always the challenge for me. But um, actually, I lied. My favorite vehicle is the Mastodon. The Mastodon is my favorite vehicle in Games Workshop movies. Because that thing is ridiculous. Um, and I've gotten a chance to paint one, and it was awesome. Oh, Micah, breaking my heart. Hopefully, this, this might get me to affiliate status. There are a bunch of you here. But, um... <laughs> I appreciate the sentiment, Ryan. Yeah, no, I I would like use it. I would use my Twitch Prime for uh, like Games Workshop's channel or Frontline Gaming's channel um, if there was a big event or something. And forget. I mean, renewing every month is just unless you're actively engaged, like every month, like coming here every month. I should just remind everybody. But, uh, but yeah, so the Mastodon, um, I have one or I had one that I painted for, uh, for my buddy Jonathan. And that was like the coolest model to paint. It's huge and just really clean panels and it's just obnoxiously large. And, um, when it's done, you're just like, okay. Oh, cool. So, yeah, maybe next week I'll be at, like, affiliate status. That'd be nice. But, um, you know, gotta, say, gotta have goals. So, so, yeah, Mastodon, but I love that older, I love that older aesthetic for, for the, uh, Land Raiders. More than the new kind of boxy, but then I like the Repulsor, so... You know, I'm a man of many tastes. But I think this is where we're going to leave it tonight with this kind of black metal stone. You know who else has a, you know who else has a Mastodon? Mr. Brian Harvey has a Mastodon. Which is about as far along as this Tantalus is. 
I think actually maybe the Tantalus is further. But... Awesome. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, I think this is fun, man. I'm enjoying it. So definitely, definitely smart to dial it back a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's all jealousy that you have a Mastodon, right? It's not, it's nothing else. It's just jealous. Um, So yeah, so this is fun. I think I think the four days a week is perfect. It gives me time to, to film. It gives me time to stream. Um, and then it gives me time to, you know, spend time with my wife. Uh, and then paint commissions and all that stuff. So I think I'm, you know, I'll get to a balance. This is week two. Uh, but so far, you know, really happy with how everything's going. Um, and my goal for the Patreon is to, my goal is to average four videos a week. So 16 videos a month on average, I think is doable. I think it's a lot. I mean, I think it's a lot of work, but I think it's doable. Um, but if somebody's like subscribing for like six bucks a month and they're getting 16 videos out of it, even if they're not hundred percent applicable, you're like, damn, this guy's putting out a ton of content. So, um, and it, it'll, I'll be able to clip through, like, I don't want to spend two weeks three weeks going over one model's tutorial. I have, I have too much to do <laughs> for that. Um, so I want to, I want to move through, I want to clip through these topics. Um, I want to clip through different things on stream. So it's, you know, it's fun and it's fresh and funky, funky fresh. So anyway, enough rambling for me. Yeah. I love you too, buddy. It's just because I want to see you do it. I just want to see, I want to see the world leaders mastodon. I, I really just, that's the only reason I give you shit, but, um, maybe I'll get a mastodon and then we can both paint our own mastodons at the same time. That would be fun. Um, but yeah, so thank you all very, very much for coming and hanging out with me. Uh, Brian, it's really good to see you on stream, buddy. Um, I hope you're able to, to come around more and give me a hard time as you do. But I'm, I don't know. I'm really happy with this. This is kind of a really, really funky. But that's part of what I think is great about this hobby and, and about painting in general is to go into something with absolutely no clue what it's going to end up looking like. And, and ending up with something that's really interesting. I think this base is really interesting. I think there's a lot of color variation. I think there's a, there's kind of a natural look where it does look like stone, but then there's kind of a supernatural spooky otherworldly thing kind of going on with all that green. Um, I think it's a really interesting base. And, you know, we just, just with a little bit of luck and a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of technique, you know, we were able to kind of work through just kind of, you know, spraying some inks and, or some, some washes and acrylic inks, not FW, but, you know, Vallejo and stuff. Um, I'm really, what I'm really, really looking forward to is I'm really looking forward to getting this guy, like getting all this masked off, getting this guy airbrushed and getting the, the, the white and the red and gold super vibrant and warm. And then seeing him on the base with those warm tones offsetting with that green. Oh man. I think that's going to be really cool. Thanks, Micah. Um, and thanks again, guys. We're going to be working on this guy uh, for the rest of the week. I might I might mix it up one night. Um, but now I'm excited. 
before it was like, oh, where do I start? What do I do? Um, but then, you know, once you break the seal on a model and once you can kind of see it, you know, it's go time. So uh, tomorrow I'll be finishing up the Ultramarines tutorial and I might film another part of the Custodes tutorial tomorrow morning. But other than that, I'm going to be working on this guy. Um, I'll be streaming tomorrow afternoon, Idaho time. And then, uh, you know, I'll be online. I'll be on the Patreon and I'll be, I'll be around. So thank you all again. And we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you guys around. Appreciate it. All right, have a good night.